problem of pharmaceutical trafficking is massive, billions and billions of dollars. She had a, a terrified look on her face, and blood was pouring out of her mouth into the sink. Counterfeit versions of popular medications are flooding Britain's National Health Service. She had a severe life, but she survived in any case. Toxic side ups killed hundreds of people. We had a big case in USA with heparin. More than 100 people were killed by this hospital medicine. Esta história pode parecer inacreditável. É a história do negócio de medicamentos falsos. Das pessoas que adoecem e morrem por tomarem estes medicamentos que deviam curá-las. When that package arrives in the mail, you just don't know what really is in it. It can be like poison, like rat poison, for example, I found that. Business has grown, grown and grown. Well, this is more profitable than heroin and other drugs. É uma indústria ilegal que vale milhões. Esta é uma história sobre falsificadores impiedosos que matam pessoas todos os dias. Mas surpreendentemente, é também uma história que não tem muita cobertura na comunicação social. O clichê habitual dos mídia para a grande e má indústria farmacêutica não se aplica aqui. Neste caso, as empresas farmacêuticas estão entre as vítimas. E até ao advento da internet, era só mais uma história horrenda vinda dos países em desenvolvimento. Milhões de pessoas são afetadas por medicamentos falsos. E todos os anos, milhares de seres humanos morrem por causa dessas drogas. Esta é a história de algumas das pessoas que trabalham, dia e noite, para combater uma das atividades criminosas mais lucrativas da atualidade. countries there are people who are buying uh, pharmaceuticals at the internet and uh, a big part of the medicine they buy are fake it can be just be sugar pills but they can also be very dangerous for you As a detective, for the last 30 years, I am working to combat the meanness of fake drugs in India. Around 8 to 10 rates, every year, they are making the fake medicines. They are the murderers. It's more than a murder. If someone comes to murder you, you know that he's in front of me. He's the man who is, who is trying to murder me. But in this, you do not know who is trying to murder you and who has murdered these guys, those who are dead, because of these fake pills. Killer is invisible. And he's just doing this to earn money. I'm a special agent with the FDA's Office of Criminal Investigations, and I manage an elite crew of agents that are cybercrime specialists, and their primary job is investigating internet pharmaceutical trafficking networks. We often joke that we're drinking out of a fire hose, and that's literally how it feels when you get so much information in about so many illegal, you know, online pharmaceutical trafficking networks. It, um, it can be overwhelming at times. Our mom got sick, given medication one day. If, if she hadn't gotten sick from that day when she was given the counterfeit drugs, 
how, how many more times would they have, people in that office would have received that drug? She had boxes and boxes of the counterfeit drugs. people ask me, who are buying the internet? Who are they? Must be like uh, bad, bad, like criminals. No. There's normal people. And it's easy. But it's a gamble, I would say. We have calculated 50% of what you buy at the internet are fake. Os dados não batem certo quanto ao número de pessoas que morrem por causa de medicamentos falsos. A Interpol estima que sejam entre 100 mil e até 1 milhão anualmente. Durante muitos anos, Cecília Fant trabalhou como agente da Polícia Federal sueca e era especialista em estupefacientes e medicamentos ilícitos. Há alguns anos foi recrutada pela Interpol para coordenar o combate global a esta forma de crime. Se você olhar os websites da internet, eles olham muito profissional. Você tem doctores e nurses. E você pensa que a medicina vem de um laboratório. Mas por trás disso... It can be a, a room, a garage, it's dirty. So there can be anything in it to make the pill look like accurate. It can be uh, like poison, like rat poison, for example, I found that, and all kind of polish. You maybe, you, you know if you have a pill, it should be very like shiny, and there's a special kind of layer, but they use anything like uh, car polish or floor polish, whatever. So all kind of uh, heavy metal, really, uh, things that can give you cancer. People died. Um ambiente higiênico e esterilizado, máquinas limpas e pessoas com máscaras. É de um sítio assim que queremos que venham os nossos medicamentos. Mas e se os comprimidos que julgamos que nos curam viessem de um sítio como este? This can be anywhere. Like we found in Sweden, for example, you know. It was the Swedish customs to find it. They have a pill machine there. Everybody was there, the police came there, me as well. It's really dirty, it's really dusty. And there are different kind of buckets with uh, powder. But it was a blender that you use for food. And it really showed that this can happen anywhere. I lose sleep over it. Um, at night sometimes, how big the problem is. And I'll give you an example. My own father-in-law was buying from a, quote, Canadian online pharmacy. My sister said she thought it was okay to buy from an online pharmacy. And in the United States, uh, most people think that if they go to a website that has a maple leaf on it, being, you know, sold by Canadians or otherwise purports to be a Canadian online pharmacy, that the drugs are actually going to come from Canada. They don't, in most cases. Apesar das vítimas de medicamentos falsos serem aos milhões, foi muito difícil encontrar quem quisesse falar para as nossas câmaras. Quando estamos doentes, não suspeitamos que o um medicamento que devia curar-nos piora o nosso estado. Até que uma paciente foi envenenada. Agentes especiais fizeram uma rusga a um consultório médico no Arizona e a vida de dois irmãos mudou de forma drástica. This is a case uh, involving counterfeit Avastin, which is a cancer medication. That case really started with a victim, a woman um, um, by the name of Betty Hunter. She went into an oncology clinic and had a reaction to the Avastin. And come to find out it wasn't Avastin at all. It was labeled Altazan, which is the Turkish version. And we found out that it wasn't, it didn't contain the active pharmaceutical ingredient. It contained tap water and mold.
people are in prison today because our mom got sick. Yeah. Given medication one day. We're just a family that was affected by this amongst probably millions of families. You go to your doctor, do you have to ask that question? Do you give counterfeit drugs? Show me the bodies. That's what I constantly hear. If there's such a problem with online pharmacies, Dan, then show me the bodies. Bodies, I ask? People generally don't just drop dead when they take a drug that does not have a therapeutic benefit. Haven't we learned from history, from years of public health experience? Show me the bodies. This is Betty Hunter. Betty was a lung cancer patient. Miss Hunter went to f hematology and oncology in Chandler, Arizona, for an infusion of what she believed was Avastin, a drug she had taken previously. Soon after the infusion began, Miss Hunter started to shake and became nauseous and feverish. The nurse reported in her chart, quote, patient complaining of feeling very jittery, hands shaking, and appeared to be red in face. Doctor notified an infusion stopped. I'm David Lehan. This is my brother, Chris. Our mother passed away. Um, she was given, uh, for the most part, legitimate um, cancer drugs. However, we learned from the FDA that she was the victim of uh, counterfeit um, narcotics, so... Um, counterfeit cancer drugs. Thank you. This is our family home. Um, our folks built this home with friends um, 44 years ago or something like that, and it's still in the family, and our stepdad, Paul Hunter, still lives here. Hey, Paul, how you doing, buddy? It was my birthday, and Mom gave me, um, she gave me a little box, and I opened it up. This was in February, and they were, they were pictures of me as a, as a baby, and I knew something was wrong, and that's when she broke the news and told me that she had been, she had been diagnosed with lung cancer. Our mom had researched, and, and she had uh, heard good things about this doctor, and uh, that's where she decided to get her treatments. They were very positive for her because her cancer never had really uh, had grown. So we were very optimistic when they, they recommended Avastin as the drug of choice to, to combat this particular cancer. A Interpol deu-nos autorização para filmar o centro de comando do seu quartel-general em Lyon, França. Este é um vislumbre raro dos bastidores. A Interpol está a coordenar a Operação Pangeia, que se realiza anualmente durante uma semana. No decorrer desta operação, a polícia, os agentes alfandegários e as autoridades sanitárias em mais de 100 países prepara um ataque relâmpago a nível mundial aos fabricantes e traficantes de medicamentos falsos. During this week, uh, the custom will do the seizures by the borders. The police will uh, do arrest and they will try to find websites uh, online that are selling this falsified medicine. And also we have the health uh, regulatories. Some of them are enforcement powers and um, they do the same work as the police. All the countries are sending us information, telling us what they're doing during this week. operation team then uh, from my uh, unit, from the pharmaceutical crime unit. And then we have uh, someone from MHRA, the English medicine boards. Uh, we have uh, someone from the FDA. And we have customs, of course. We have also uh, someone from the Singapore um, health agency as well. And we have Europol. 
everything we do during this week. The custom, the police and the health, it's all about protecting people's lives. Estes são apenas os números correspondentes a um ano da Operação Pangeia. Mas estes resultados aterradores são ínfimos comparativamente ao negócio multimilionário. Se você vai ao website e quer comprar antibiótico, por alguma razão, e cada vez que você compra algo no nosso website, você vai ter Viagra, and Levitra ou um, Cialis. Então você talvez deveria pensar se esses são os websites próprios. This website, for example, is selling antibiotics, whatever you want. And every time you buy antibiotic, you get free pills. You know about this, guys? No. You know the Sandu? Oh, yes. From the yes. tropical islands? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So these guys here, they will be interesting for you, yes? Absolutely. Ah. These are repeat names we keep saying. We've got a uh, list of uh, several identified websites associated with them as well, so. But I couldn't see any bank account. Did you, did you see and get any more details? Or? They didn't identify the bank accounts specifically, but they mentioned that they have bank accounts, oh, yeah. uh, particularly within the United States. And that's information that we didn't have before. Why do we have to blur Brian? Well, Brian is a good agent, and I need Brian to continue doing undercover work. Well, he, his days of doing undercover work would be done, much like mine are. It's for his own safety, for his family's safety. Uh, generally, in my experience, when uh, a suspect finds out that you're the undercover agent, um, they're not happy about that. <laughs> so uh, undercover work has its risks as well. And, and just being out there knowing that, you know, Brian or whoever is an undercover agent carries those risks that yep. we'd like to mitigate and as we'll much as possible. We can find out about the, uh, the analysis. In the fight against counterfeit medicines, Interpol is extremely important. I don't know what I would do without Cecilia and Aileen and their unit. Um, the, I mean, they are the ones that put us all together and they recognize it's global and they're the ones telling us, hey, you know, whether you're the United States or Mexico or France or China, we need to come up with a global solution for this. In one recent investigation, we had uh, customers obviously in the United States. We had servers uh, for the websites located in the United States and in Europe. We had payment processors uh, in Costa Rica and in Europe, uh, banking, so the money would flow to countries like Cyprus and Israel and Hong Kong. We have customer service personnel in India and the Philippines. The drugs came from India, China, Pakistan. They were transshipped through countries like the United Kingdom and Mauritius. So it is a, like a big spider web, and it's a, definitely a global enterprise. I think the worst thing that could happen for the pharmaceutical industry would be that people lost faith in the medicines they get in their pharmacies. If you are going to take a drug that potentially saves your life or the life of your child, and you cannot trust that this will be efficacious, for instance, if it's counterfeit, for me, that is the worst case scenario. And we will do a lot of things in cooperation to ensure that that doesn't happen. FPA is the European Federation of Pharmaceutical Industries and Associations. Developing a, a new drug is a huge undertaking. It will typically take between five and ten years, and you have to go various stages of clinical trials in order to demonstrate that it is efficacious and that it is safe. So people can really trust that this is a good and approved drug. If you're a counterfeiter, basically the only thing you have to do is to make a box and a pill, and this pill can be anything. So basically that is the only thing they need, and that doesn't cost a lot. But for instance, if you, if you want to uh, develop a drug from scratch, the start price is about a billion dollars. These people make just as much money on counterfeit drugs as they would do selling, dealing heroin. So, so it doesn't really matter what kind of drugs we are talking about, because basically all groups, all classes could be subject to counterfeiting. And uh, since the profit is huge, 
they go in everywhere. So when we're doing Operation Pangea, it's different angles. In Asia, for example, I know and in Africa, there are pharmacies that are not real. And of course, the bad guys take advantage of that. I mean, they just think about the money. They don't care people are dying. And it can be very expensive to, to buy the proper medicine at the hospital. Then they, they go around the corner and buy the medicine in a booth somewhere. And they get the medicine for the children. And then they are, they are not good, you know. They are bad medicine, so they die. Well, I travel a lot, and I've been to Asia recently, and I become very sick. And I was really afraid of going to the pharmacy, because I was not sure they would get the proper medicine. I'm, I'm a tourist there, right? But think about all these people. They cannot trust normal pharmacies in the country. Major problem in these countries, but it also happens in Europe. Also happens in all countries. Esta rusga policial efetuada no Vietnã é o resultado de uma investigação levada a cabo por um detetive que trabalha para a indústria farmacêutica. Aqui a polícia confiscou inúmeras caixas de medicamentos falsos que estavam armazenadas num pequeno apartamento. Esta rusga levou-nos a outro detetive particular, na Índia, que segue o rastro de alguns fabricantes de medicamentos falsos. We are going to Aligarh. It's a small town near Delhi. One of the main markets for distribution of these fake drugs. There's one of my informers. He has promised me to give some samples today. So we are here to collect the information of this fake, some fake medicines. Now we'll come to know the brands. Uma grande parte dos medicamentos falsos vendidos a nível mundial é produzida na Índia. Suresh Sati trabalha para algumas empresas farmacêuticas legais. Segue o rastro de amostras de medicamentos falsos e entra em contato com as empresas cuja marca aparece nas embalagens. Depois faz um contrato com a empresa farmacêutica para investigar a organização criminosa que está por detrás dos medicamentos falsos. Chegamos a um dos maiores mercados grossistas de medicamentos da Índia. Enquanto Suresh sai do carro para se encontrar com os informadores, recebo instruções para não sair e esconder a câmera. Suresh diz que a câmera será apreendida se a mostrar no mercado. O detetive regressa com as amostras de medicamentos falsos que foram compradas por seus colaboradores. This painkiller, this Vovaranesa of Novartis. You see, from the strip, you can't, you can't find out that this is fake. Yes, there is some difference in the box, but that is also so minor. Only the person who is dealing in it can tell you the difference. Otherwise, for the common man, there's no difference. You can see the box. All things are printed. Already a hologram of Novartis. Even the, the tape to close the box is also printed Novartis. All batch numbers are there, manufacturing date is there. So a common man can't judge that this is a fake. Now, we'll try to investigate, penetrate more inside the, from where this is coming, which is the factory, which is, who is manufacturing, and we'll try to organize an action on that. I first see April in 1982. Since I saw that the business has grown, grown, and grown. Because this is more profitable than heroin and other drugs. In 90s, we found that these are being exported also. Those who are not selling their product here in the country, they are known people, well known. They have their own factories, their own brands, under the 
cover of their own brand. They make the fake also and export it. The person who is making it, he'll take a pill from one person, <coughs> he'll take the packaging from some other person, he will get it stripped at the third place, and he'll pack the material at fourth place. Till the time you try to organize the raid, you'll see the material is shifted. Now you have to go to the another jurisdiction police station. Till the time you organize it there, the material is shifted to the third person. And to penetrate inside the nexus and to get the information of day-to-day -day information of the modus operandi of these people is very risky. Undercover, you can put your man at one place and then you will not get the information of the second place. Your six months hard work is ruined. O agente especial da FDA, Dan Burke, vai revelar o seu disfarce ao participar neste filme. Estas imagens foram captadas durante o seu último trabalho como infiltrado. Dan e dois colegas estão a tentar ludibriar o empresário chinês que trafica medicamentos falsos para emagrecer. O agente Dan Burke apresenta-se com uma camisa havaiana, de cor verde. Primeiro, o suspeito senta-se na cadeira errada. Dan pede-lhe para mudar de sítio, pois receia que o suspeito não seja filmado. Dan precisa das declarações gravadas como prova. My partner at the time uh, received a complaint from GlaxoSmithKline, the producers of Ally, which was an over-the-counter weight loss medication. And uh, they were finding that there was a large amount of counterfeit Ally in, in, the, in the supply chain in the United States. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I want to know exactly how this stuff is going to look. We ultimately set a meeting posing as buyers I was playing the role of a customs broker, so someone who is going to broker a large amount of the uh, counterfeit ally into the country. Uh, the two other agents uh, were posing as buyers. So I don't want to go too much into the details, but um, we had made a series of undercover purchases and then ultimately wanted to grow that business, and that's how it worked. You play, you play golf? Uh, yes, I can do, but not, not as good. Not good? You gotta, yeah. play, you gotta play with us. Go put it right in. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I like playing with these guys. <laughs> Are you going to show me you playing golf? Uh, no, I want to show you the, uh, the package. Oh, okay. Oh, great. What you're thinking about at the time is um, you want to get the evidence. You want to get enough information that will demonstrate to a jury that we got the right guy. I have a sweet place in Beijing. Okay, well, can you give me the address? Uh, okay. So, I'm asking questions that are corroborating information that I already know about the person to make sure that this is in fact the right person and sort of trying to understand the suspect's level of involvement. Uh, in an environment where, you know, he's sort of willing to talk. Some people will say, like, oh, is this really worth it? I mean, you close them down one day, the next day they're up again. It's always worth it. We always have to make it so difficult as possible. It's often, you know, when you work with a car, they say, why do you arrest him? You know, God, he would be out in one hour. Well, maybe in one hour I saved some person's life because you can't sell the drugs. Same with this. Some of the drugs, of course, just sugar pills, but many of the, these medicines can be very, very dangerous. It is dangerous to buy things online, and that is really what this whole operation is about, to change people's thinking. Especially when you come to young people, because you know they're living their life at the internet, and they do everything online. So that's why you are very, very important for them. 
Sometimes when I talk to especially girls, uh, they say, well, I, I talked to some very nice guy at the internet and I want to lose some weight, you know, and he said, this is very good for you. And he was very nice to me. I said, look, Anna, they are not nice to you. They want to sell. This is a business for them. They make fake medicine. They sell as much as possible because they want to earn money on it. That is the fact. Many of these are very organized and they earn big, big money on this. <laughs> See, this is a raid uh, done in Lucknow. The boy was caught with the handcuffs. See, in this raid, the person was having a revolver. This is a revolver we got, got from there. Don't you ever fear for your life? Yes, they will kill you anytime. But and I'm fighting for a good cause. Why should I fear? God is with me. So many fake drugs are being sold, used, and there is not a single case reported by any doctor that this man is dead because of this fake drug. Why they could have come to the, to the conclusion that this man is died because yesterday I have given this prescription and that drug may be fake. No one is bothered. The man is dead, it's that. But if doctor is not reporting, who will say that fake drugs are being sold in the market? No one. Oh, recently there is a case. Uh, some drugs were uh, being supplied to some government hospital, and that was paracetamol. Uh, some boxes were damaged. So one of the person there, he sent that paracetamol to the lab. See, this is expired or this is damaged or what. Then he came to know that this is the fake. So fake is being supplied to the government hospital. Quando investigadores e organizações tentam estimar o número anual de óbitos causados por medicamentos falsos, contam tanto os incidentes em que o medicamento envenenou e matou pessoas, como os casos em que o medicamento pode ter sido inofensivo e a pessoa morreu por não ter acesso ao medicamento adequado. PET scans, CT scans were improving. Her, her tumors were shrinking and, and uh, we were hopeful that we had bought some time for our family. It seemed like no big deal and she did go on with life and she'd go to weddings and, and birthdays and she just went on as if she wasn't even sick. Then, uh, our mom had a reaction and got sick during the infusion of medication. She had received multiple doses of this medication and never, never a, a problem. This particular day, she developed chills, vomiting, uh, cramping, spike in her fever. The nurse who was in charge of the infusion, she called the drug supplier in Canada to find out what they were supposed to do because they had never seen this before. That's how that phone call got made. That's how the FDA got wind of our mom getting medications that day. They had tapped the phone of the supplier in Canada. The FDA raided the doctor's office two weeks later, confiscated the medications off the shelf, which they determined was water and, and mold. The doctor was informed of that she had purchased counterfeit drugs. Um, our mom was still alive, still seeking treatment from the doctor, but uh, no one told anybody anything. Mom's health began to deteriorate. 
coughing, chills, laying in bed, couldn't breathe, all over a period of, of two months. We knew the inevitable was probably coming. Uh, she said that um, something was up with her doctor. She didn't know what was going on, but her doctor wasn't treating her the way that she had been treated in the past. And she wanted to find another oncologist. It was a bright, sunny morning, hot. Uh, told her I'd be right out. And uh, let's see what we can do. In the meantime, my brother had come on out. And there was Paul holding my mother over the sink. She was not able to breathe. She had a, a terrified look on her face and blood was pouring out of her mouth into the sink. But her kitchen window was her, was her inspiration every day to look out her backyard. So it was just kind of fitting that it happened right there. There's no doubt in my mind that the biggest threat to the public health is people buying medicines online from not authorized dealers, not authorized pharmacies, in the hope that they can either get drugs that are prescription, that they can get something which is not available in your country, or that they can get them cheaper than in your home country. That it poses a really big threat to public health. You can't control the internet. This is just impossible. So uh, having a, a restriction on, on this uh, is, is a good idea and you can do that. But basically, if people want to have something, they are going to get it. In the future, if you go into a European web pharmacy, there will be a little logo. And this logo you can press on and the, it will then take you to your national regulatory authority and tell you this is a legit pharmacy. If you want to be absolutely sure that your drug is genuine, the best way today is to get it from your pharmacy. Yes. <laughs> Come 2018 and 19, all drugs handed out in pharmacies in Europe will be traceable. Each and every box of pharmaceuticals will have a little name on it. And when you come down to your pharmacy, your pharmacist, he takes out the box, he goes through the 2D barcode reader, then it sees, okay, this individual box already exists in the data package from the pharmaceutical company. It is checked out and can never be used again. So we pin a lot of our hopes into this uh, 2D barcode serialization. We have informers all over the country. Whenever we get information from our informer that we have got some information that's this, 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 Factory is indulging in this business. We try to penetrate inside and get our man as a worker inside the factory to get the day-to-day -day motor surprise of uh, the bus. Then we have to see the availability of the police. It may be that he is manufacturing today and police is not available there. He said, oh, sorry, we are busy today. Uh, okay, you come tomorrow and then we'll uh, take action on your complaint. Tomorrow the product is not there. Then again you have to wait for a month or so when you will get the information. And so you have to organize police, the person, inside, when the product is going on, on, on the machine. Well, if you will not catch him red-handed, you will say, I am not doing it. Because he is doing it just once or twice in 15 days. Cada vez mais pessoas compram medicamentos online. 
e os profissionais de saúde também tentam poupar dinheiro indo à procura de produtos na internet. No caso de Betty Hunter, foi a própria médica que, sem saber, comprou um medicamento contrafeito para tratamento do cancro. É apenas irónico que os médicos podem ter com o greed e colocar a pessoa em saúde em jeopardy for for money it's a lot of money though it's a fortune um i believe the first agent we spoke to said that she had paid a tenth a tenth of the going rate for the altazon but we were unaware of this of course we would have taken mom somewhere else of course we would have but we didn't know we just thought she had a reaction to the drug that time we filed a complaint with the medical board here in the state of arizona david had started a dialogue with the two fda agents in st louis and told us that they had indeed arrested the two turkish individuals yeah who who sold the counterfeit drugs to Canada, to Canada, to the United States. They're killing people on the other side of the globe so they can make a living. That's all it is. Yeah. And without conscious, and without any, any caring whatsoever. And they couldn't give a damn about some woman in Arizona who might be vulnerable and sick and who needs that medicine to stay alive. The sentencing was uh, healing. For once, we were getting some justice. Here was, here was our mother, who first we thought she just died from natural causes. And then we find out, no, she, her death was uh, uh, complicated. It involved poison. And so what a relief to finally see something done about it, something concrete, something tangible. You could see the handcuffs on these people as they were led off to prison. Os dois fabricantes turcos do medicamento contrafeito que deixou Betty Hunter gravemente doente foram ludibriados pelos agentes da FDA num quarto de hotel semelhante ao que foi usado para ludibriar este criminoso chinês. Os dois meliantes turcos foram condenados com uma sentença de prisão de dois anos e meio e uma multa de 150 mil dólares. After uh, probably about a two hour undercover meeting, um, I had made an arrest signal. I think as far as the outside boxes go, I'm thinking we, we should just probably call it rice. And once that signal was made, uh, we had agents uh, in an adjoining room come through and just affect the arrest. So from the moment that we received the complaint from the manufacturer was eight months, nine months. So that was a relatively quick investigation. Some move quickly, some take years to develop. I think he got seven or eight years in prison. In some cases, I've seen sentences that are just ridiculous, and in some cases, I've been surprised by sentences. The more money than the heroin or the other drugs, this fake drug business has more money than that, and lesser risk. Because if you'll be caught with the heroin, the narcotics, there will be a case of narcotics on you. You will not be spared by the police. Ten years, twenty years. But if the fake drugs, then you say, oh, this is fake or not? Let us see. It will go to the lab. Otherwise, this is a case of infringement of copyright. Just he has used the brand only. Em muitos países, a pena por fabrico de medicamentos falsos é quase igual à pena por falsificação de um relógio Rolex ou de uma mala Gucci. Eu trabalho com narcotics há muitos anos. 
For me, I look at narcotics and pharmaceuticals, it's about the same thing, it's a drug. Uh, but if you come, uh, look from a law enforcement point of view, it's uh, the sentence uh, when you've, you've been arrested, you go to jail. Ah, big, big difference. You can get 10, 20 years, it depends on your country, for uh, narcotics. And when it comes to pharmaceuticals, it can be one up to maybe six, eight years, but it's very rare. Mostly, it's only um, one year imprisonment and a fee for being committing a pharmaceutical crime in most countries. So I would say that is the biggest problem. I would like uh, pharmaceutical crime to be a part of uh, uh, crimes that you could uh, seizure the money, the houses, the cars, whatever, from the criminals, because that's what really hurts. In some countries, you can do it. You can use the money on the law. It's considered to be a white-collar crime. So then you can take the money. I think that uh, that is something that we should work on. For example, we have tons of medicine that exists in Asia and Africa. Tons. And there will be maybe one guy that arrested, and he maybe have a... Um, in, he don't have a good education. Uh, he don't know so much about all this. But he's the one that got arrested. But there are other people who are really earning the money. If we can, in this kind of crime, um, could seize your money, money uh, following the money, and seize your money, houses, things like that, then I think there would be a, a change. And uh, in that way, we also interrupt, of course, the business. So and the bad guys don't get any money. Right. What I would like to wish is, of course, that um, we could have a great uh, or a greater cooperation with one. all banks. There are, of course, places around the globe that are not working so well with us or um, that have a, a banking system that it can be more difficult. So not the criminals can hide money. That would be, would be on my wish list, of course. I would wish for more cooperation with the private sector, companies that run the internet, say, um, inter domain name registrars, uh, hosting companies, ICANN, uh, I would wish that they would understand that they're, they have a role in this global market and that uh, they have a responsibility in this global market. And I would just wish that they would listen to us when we ask them, hey, or we tell them a website selling you know, an illegal product, take it offline. They don't always do that. And in most cases, they won't. In India, I think there, there's no one who really want to spend money on this. Even the companies have done a lot of reads. Everyone, everyone appreciated. Glaxo appreciated, Pfizer appreciated, Abbott appreciated. Sometimes I feel that these companies are interested only because their brand is being used there. If their brand is not on stake, they are not interested to catch this person for fake medicines. You are worried about your brand only, not about that that fake drug is in the market and it can kill someone. There are only eight to ten nexuses maximum. Those who are the big duplicators or those who are the big game makers in this fake drugs. And they are more than 25 companies whose products are being faked. If 25 companies come together, make one funding, is to catch these nine people is very, very, very simple. In a year or so, you can stop them. The problem can come to 5%. I know all the places, I know all the persons, I know their motors of branding. I know how they are doing it, which are the markets their product is being sold. But without the help of all pharma companies, you can't do it. A indústria farmacêutica ataca de várias formas o negócio dos medicamentos falsos. A maioria das grandes companhias investe muitos milhões de dólares no combate aos medicamentos contrafeitos. Mas pode ser difícil para as empresas concorrentes colaborarem. If you find something in a shed where they have a lot of counterfeits, then it will be all kinds of products, Pfizer, Novartis, AstraZeneca, the, the whole thing. And I don't know if these are done coordinated. That would be preferable. 
but that is not always the case. All the individual pharmaceutical companies are trying to combat and trace counterfeit drugs. But you can always say that you could do more in a certain way. But for instance, this group that I'm a, a member of in FPM, there you actually have the industry sitting and working together. A Operação Pangeia deste ano terminou e a pressão feita sobre o um negócio dos medicamentos falsos voltou ao normal. And in many, many countries, the laws that were written about this, there was before internet, they don't have the possibilities to actually close down websites. That, I think, every country should have. É bem mais difícil controlar as farmácias online do que as farmácias do rua. Assim que um sítio na internet é encerrado, aparecem logo outros. I don't want to regulate the internet. I mean, the internet should be the free spirit for people. But when you have internet pharmacies, you know, that are selling these medicines that are hurting or killing people, those need to be regulated. And now I read this article uh, and uh, this bad guy who was selling cancer medicine. And then they said, how about, how can you do it? It was all fake. So well, that they're gonna die anyway. Mm -hmm.